GERD. What is it? The GER stands for gastroesophageal reflux, an event that can be without symptoms, especially in pediatric patients. The D is for disease, denoting when this phenomenon causes issues. Issues from the stomach continually having its contents escape into the esophagus. Colloquially called acid reflux, it's important to note that not all reflux is acidic. Anything escaping out of the stomach is culprit. What causes GERD? Lower esophageal sphincter dysfunction, the smooth muscle band that relaxes to let food into the stomach and contracts to prevent it from coming back out. This sphincter doesn't do its job so well sometimes and can relax when it shouldn't, often due to gastric distension. Esophageal motility issues. The job of the esophagus is to move food from your mouth to the stomach. If it doesn't do its job well, when reflux happens, your esophagus won't push the reflux back into the stomach as well as it should. Hiatal hernia. An anatomic defect that gets in the way of your diaphragm, helping the lower esophageal sphincter out by acting as an extrinsic sphincter support at the point where your diaphragm wraps around the esophagus. Pregnancy and its torrent of hormones like progesterone decrease pressure the lower esophageal sphincter naturally exerts as well as the anatomical change associated with being pregunat. How do we identify this disease? History-wise, heartburn and regurgitation are the classical GERD symptoms, although not specific enough to diagnose based on these symptoms alone. Assessment-wise, chest pain. Why? Irritation to your esophagus can cause it to spasm. This is an uncomfortable sensation. Also, having stomach contents applied to sensitive esophageal tissues is anything but soothing. Dysphagia, either caused by esophageal narrowing due to inflammation or just slow peristalsis in general. Severe cases of GERD can splash all the way up to your vocal cords, making a patient's voice more hoarse and giving the patient the desire to cough. GERD can also result in dental degradation due to the teeth being subject to more continuous acid exposure. Bad taste in the mouth. Why? Because regurgitated stomach contents taste as good as they sound. For definitive care, endoscopy. Although over half of patients with GERD will not have any evidence of mucosal damage, its value lies in ruling out other disease processes with similar presentations, like gastritis, eosinophilic esophagitis, Barrett's esophagus, ulcers, or cancer. Esophageal manometry or pressure measurement. Although just like endoscopy not well at diagnosing GERD specifically, it is used to exclude pathologies like achalasia, a condition where your lower esophageal sphincter fails to let food into the stomach. Manometry's main use, though, is confirming the accurate placement of the next identification tool. Esophageal pH monitoring, similar to esophageal manometry but with sensors for pH instead of pressure. This will help confirm the presence of reflux and can even be set up to sense non-acidic reflux events called impedance pH monitoring. A correlation between the patient's subjective symptoms and the objective evidence of reflux is then drawn to confirm GERD as the cause. How is GERD treated? Starting with the basics. Positioning. Certain positions can make GERD better and others cause it to worsen. Get your patient into a position of comfort. Next, changing eating habits to avoid foods that aggravate GERD symptoms and to change the times of day that a patient eats. For example, if GERD is especially bad during the night, to avoid eating right before bed. Although this is going to vary from patient to patient, and there isn't a whole lot of evidence advocating for the effectiveness of restricting stereotypical GERD culprits as a broad treatment measure. Weight loss for the overweight patient. There's a well-documented relationship between obesity and GERD. Decrease your weight, and you decrease your risk. Proton pump inhibitors. Why? This class of medication stops the proton pumps belonging to the cells in your stomach walls from excreting hydrogen ions into the stomach. Less hydrogen, less acidity. Although just under half of patients treated with proton pump inhibitors have a recurrence of GERD despite this treatment. This can be for a number of reasons. For example, proton pump inhibitors only change the acidity of the stomach's contents and do nothing to prevent their escape into the esophagus. This non-acidic or low acidic reflux can still cause harm. And for when symptoms persist despite the use of proton pump inhibitors, anti-reflux surgery, aka fundlopification. Why? Surgically wrapping a portion of the stomach around the esophagus causes the stomach to pinch off the esophagus during contractions, keeping their contents where they should be. Another surgical method I found mention of, magnets, otherwise known as magnetic gastroesophageal junction reinforcement. Here, a ring of magnets is placed near your esophageal sphincter. This helps the door to your stomach fully close, stopping contents from inappropriately escaping. I hope I improved your understanding of this often glossed over disease process. It's a good one to have a grasp on for chest pain differentials. Thanks very much for watching.